Hello everyone. Uh, I hope that you had a wonderful celebration of Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, it is a time of mourning, I guess, that we see um, in our Sorrowful Mother. Uh, but it's a chance for us to draw close to her. Um, our Sorrowful Mother, I know that uh, from the readings that I've done, and I'm still getting to know her, um, is that she's an excellent person to turn to uh, when we are in a place of uh, battling uh, with uh, repeat sins, uh, battling any kind of oppressions in our lives, any kind of spiritual bondages. She is the one uh, to, to go to uh, for deliverance. Uh, so she's a very, very powerful intercessor for us in that sense. Um, so I wanted to, for the remainder of this month, go through an awesome article that I found. Uh, it's from missyomagazine.com. I won't read the whole thing, uh, but I wanted to read uh, some of the stuff of the apparitions of Our Lady of Cabello. It was there that Our Holy Mother um, revealed that she wanted to reestablish devotion to her sorrowful heart. And for those of you who are not um, familiar with the genocide in Rwanda, um, you might want to touch up, uh, maybe look it up on Wikipedia, and then you can kind of understand the historical context. Our Holy Mother actually had um, warned uh, the people in Cabello about this um, coming catastrophe. And unfortunately, um, her warnings weren't heeded. Uh, but it's a very interesting prophecy, um, a very interesting message, and I think it still applies to us today. Uh, so that's why I wanted to reflect on it. Um, the article that I'm reading, it's called Our Lady of Cabello, A Message for the World. And it's written by Sister M. Faustina Olson. And it's from January 16th, 2017. So before I begin reading, uh, let's begin with a prayer. And then we'll finish uh, with a renewal of our consecration. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Cabello, pray for us. Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. Saint Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Looking down upon all this contention in a country of unparalleled beauty, rife with poverty and tension, heaven breathed forth a message of love and warning. Kebeo, a small mountain village in southern Rwanda, is also the name of a parish founded in 1934, dedicated to Mary, Mother of God. This parish was well known for its strong Catholic faith and gave a large number of priests and consecrated persons to the Church of Rwanda. 16-year-old Alphonsine Mumareke was privileged to attend Kibeo High School, an opportunity many poor Rwandan girls did not have. Her single mother was very poor and was not able to provide further education for her after grade school and had always planned that Alphonsine would help her in the fields thereafter. However, as divine providence would arrange it, a space had unexpectedly opened up in a government-run all-girls school staffed by religious sisters. Learning of the opportunity, Alphonsine's parish priest intervened and she was accepted into the school. Though the school was very poor and had no running water or electricity, Alphonsine was nevertheless grateful to be there. She had always attended Mass on Sundays and had a special devotion to Our Lady. On November 28, 1981, an event happened that would forever change the life of Alphonsine and affect the lives of millions. She had just finished a geography test and was filled with inexplicable emotions, confusion, joy, dread, and fear. Calming down a little, she went into the dining hall to serve. As she was filling water glasses, 
The same apprehension mixed with bliss arose. Then she heard a voice calling her. She went into the hall where she was being drawn. Her skin tingled and her hand trembled. A soft, sweet voice called out, My daughter. Again the voice was heard, My daughter. Then, to Alphonsine's amazement, the most lovely woman she had ever beheld emerged from the cloud, floating between the floor and ceiling in a pool of shimmering light. She wore a flowing, seamless white dress with a white veil that covered her hair. Her hands were clasped in front of her in a gesture of prayer, her slender fingers pointed, pointing towards heaven. The barefoot lady was so beautiful and had such a perfect complexion that Alphonsine couldn't determine the color of her skin. Alphonsine fell to her knees and asked the lady who she was. She responded, I am the mother of the word. Our lady floated toward her without touching the ground. She asked Alphonsine, Of all the things in heaven, what makes you happy? Alphonsine replied that she loved God and his mother and that they make her happy. Our lady was pleased with her answer, telling her that she desired her schoolmates to have her same strong faith. Our lady poured out, as it were, so much love upon Afonsine that she felt she would be lifted to heaven. The Blessed Mother then asked her to join the Legion of Mary. She told the girl that she wanted to be loved by people everywhere so that she could bring lost souls to her son Jesus. Then she slowly drifted upwards and disappeared into the clouds fading light. As soon as she disappeared, Alphonsine collapsed on the floor and lay motionless for ten minutes. When she awoke from her stupor, she saw her classmates staring at her. When they all excitedly questioned her, she started to cry because she realized that her lady had departed. When she told them that she had seen the Blessed Virgin, they started to laugh at her and mock her as they all crowded around her. One of, her, one of the school teachers, Sister Blandine, pushed her way through the unbelieving crowd and, brought, crowd and brought Alphonsine to the school director and to the nurse. The director asked her to apologize to the whole school for her lies. But Alphonse couldn't deny that she had seen the mother of the word. She was sent to the nurse, who in turn sent her to her room to rest. Some supposed that she was mentally ill, others that she was just trying to attract attention. Yet others said that she had been possessed by demons in, the in her jungle home before her arrival at the school. The next day, one of the students, Marie Claire, led a group of fellow students in a confrontation with Alphonsine. As they began their attack, Alphonsine suddenly, suddenly fell to the ground and stared at the ceiling, in the same way she had done on the previous day. The change was so instantaneous that some of the girls were confused and made the sign of the cross. Marie Claire, the leading antagonist, glared at her in total disgust and disbelief. The others continued their verbal attack, laughing and waving their hands in front of her but she was oblivious to her surroundings. When Alphonsine awoke, she was overwhelmed by the love she felt. Even though this apparition was shorter, it took her longer to regain full consciousness. She explained that her heavenly lover, mother loved her children so very much, far more than their own mothers, and that she wanted the girls to think of her as a mother who really did love them. The Blessed Mother wanted Alphonsine to be like a little child to her. Play with me. I love children who will play with me because it shows me their love and trust. The two visions of Alphonsine were but the beginning of many more and they were causing increasing fear. Mary Claire's confrontations and outright hecklings intensified. She had the 
and effrontery to test Alphonsine during the apparitions, pulling her hair, twisting her fingers, pinching her, screaming in her ears, shining a flashlight in her eyes, but the seer never flinched. The scholastic body was increasingly upset over all the commotion, but they could not prevent the news from spreading to nearby villages. Soon the local faithful began to gather at the school grounds, hoping to hear the messages and see the visionaries. The visionary. Some of the students began to believe her, and they asked Alphonsine many questions about Our Lady. What did she say? What did she look like? When will she come again? Our Lady always told Alphonsine when her next visit would be. What Alphonsine did not tell them was that she was receiving messages for government officials, even the Hutu president. Heaven had directed her to tell the officials to pray, to forgive, and to stop persecuting the Tutsis and sending them into exile. She couldn't imagine how she could bring that message to the president. She was just a simple schoolgirl with no transportation. So let us now finish uh, with a renewal of our consecration. It's taken from our Militia of the Immaculata prayer card. So let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Immaculata, Queen and Mother of the Church, I renew my consecration to you this day and for always, so that you may use me for the coming of the kingdom of Jesus in the whole world. To this end, I offer you all my prayers, actions, and sacrifices of this day. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you, for those who do not have recourse to you, especially the enemies of the Holy Church and those who are recommended to you. Amen. O Immaculata, please intercede that the Church may be a beacon of light for all those who wander in darkness. Amen. And I pray, Lord, uh, for all those watching this, um, that you may bless them in a special way, any of those struggling with sins, um, any kind of bondages, Lord, that, that you may deliver them, Lord, and that you may draw them close to your most sacred heart. Holy Mother, I pray that you cover them, wrap them in your holy mantle of protection, and draw them close to your Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless all of you.